Right, so this is a, the, one of the largest, most complete pliosaur um, paddles found to date. It's certainly of a size equates to the big pliosaur um, skull and jaw we've been describing earlier. Bearing in mind, this is from the lower Kimmage clay, so that's the base, base of the sort of Kimmage clay, and this is from the upper Kimmage clay, so we're still, that range of giant reptiles ranges through the whole of the Kimmage period. This one, um, with no data with it, so it just says Kimmage Bay or whatever. This is one of the, the, um, the fallbacks, really, the, the downside of people collecting who don't re actually record accurately where these specimens come for, from. Because in future, we need to know roughly where the, the, the sort of locality and the horizon these things come from. Now, this has actually been, since it's been put on display again, it's been actually conserved and cleaned. But years ago, it was in the museum here. This is the original. There are some casts of these. There's one in the Natural History Museum. There's one in the Sedgwick Museum. Because it's, it's, it's yet to be described. No one's actually described this, this paddle at all. And, um, but when it, when it was on display originally up in the, in the gallery before the, this museum was revamped, I examined it quite closely. and It was covered in an oil shell. And... Oil shells in the upper Kimmage clay, we know where they come from, so we know those sort of levels. Now, we're, I'm pretty sure that when they used to quarry what we call the Blackstone from 1850 up to 1914, and I'm sure during those times when they excavated the Blackstone, they found this as well. Okay, now it's been put back. It's not perhaps exactly how you see it now, what it was like in real life. But it's quite interesting. When you look closely, you can see, if you know, a little bit sort of clued up, that some of these elements have been reconstructed and put back where they think it should be. But regardless of that, it's a very, very impressive flipper. Um, it's, it's one of those fossils that actually inspired me to actually carry on collecting in the Kimmage clay because to find that sort of material is a lifetime sort of find to find. And we've got other material that's actually not in this collection. It was in this collection originally, but it's now in the Natural History Museum, where they've got a 52 inch long mandible of a crocodile. And that actually came out of the oil shell workings. We know that because in the records they said the quarrymen extracted. So that's a, a de that's from the same levels as this came from. Um, and also there's a, a mandible, a lower jaw of a pliosaur, nearly as big as this one, nearly as big, that was extracted. When we look at the matrix that's in, it's actually from the mudstones. And during the time when they were extracting oil shale, there was another firm actually removing the limestones below to crush for making cement. And we're pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the mandible came out of that level when they were extracting that. Because the agreement was with all the quarry people that any fossils found would revert back to the landowner and the man, landowner was Mansell Pladel. So he was one of the four, far, or one of the founding members of setting this museum up. So naturally he donated his material here and a lot of it went to the Natural History Museum in due course. What intrigues me is this element here, this sort of how they put this together here. Now, I would love to know if these were actually fused. See, they're, they're cemented in the middle, but whether that's been put back using plaster when they, they put this into, into this um, box. Because of the old way of putting these things in, this is all plaster it's set into. So they would have set this thing up how, perhaps how they thought it came out, because it might not have been extracted as you see it now, it'd be put back and they sort of worked out roughly how they think it went. Um, so it may not be exactly correct because it looks like there's a, certainly a bone missing there. It wouldn't come out there. It's got to be something going on between the, this lower bit here and the, and the, and the back of the sort of um, humerus. All we've got is a proposal, that, that limb element there, actually bigger than this, it's more massive, um, from the upper Kimmage clay, but that, was, that fell out of the cliff many years ago and it was all put back in sections and I found it over a four year period. Uh, and there was another one that was actually for sale from a commercial dealer that was also as large, um, but unfortunately that's been sold to 
I think a German collector, which, so we've lost that to science. So these sort of things are, are not common, and the trouble is with fossil material, there's a money value to it, and this often gets more important than actually the scientific value of the fossil. And we, we've lost a lot of scientifically important material through that, really.